Good afternoon from Hamburg, Germany. It is that time of year again. We are going back down to Patagonia and this is what I'm taking with me. Let's go. Just before we get into this video, I wanted to share a huge thank you and shout out to the 14 people who have already signed up for the Introduction to YouTube for Video Creators online course, which I launched just in the last video with an announcement of something I've been working on for sort of the last two weeks. And already within sort of the first 10 hours of that uh, announcement, we sold 14 spots, which is so cool to have those uh, new people who have signed up for the course and are already learning a lot about YouTube and about how to sort of grow their own channels and community uh, on YouTube, on this giant platform. So big shout out and thank you to you guys. You know who you are and I hope you're watching this video. So uh, that is not what this video is about though. This video is about packing for Patagonia and I've got a lot of stuff here but it all has its unique purpose and reason for coming with me. If you watch the channel often, you know that I travel only carry-on. So all this stuff fits into two carry-on bags and I wanna share it with you. Now, it's really difficult to make these packing videos in under 10 minutes. So I don't know if this one will be, but I'm gonna try and keep it uh, relatively quick and streamlined. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, throw it in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer it uh, as soon as I can. So let's jump right into it. We've got hard, hard goods on this side, soft goods on this side. The first thing I've got is the Benro Carbon Fiber Travel Tripod. Uh, this was featured a few videos back with uh, Name My New Tripod. It has a name, we have picked a winner. It is now Benita. Benita is the Spanish winner for Patagonia. So the tripod has a ball head, um, which I detach when I'm traveling, uh, just to save room in the carry-ons. But yeah, fantastic new carbon fiber travel tripod uh, for photos i've got the canon 5d mark iii uh, this has been totally beat up i've had it for five years but it is an absolute workhorse and a big part of my business uh, and this is part of the last video too so go and check that out we've got kind of a cool story behind this and it might be a giveaway relatively soon but for now it's coming with me down to patagonia with the uh, still photography lenses, I've got a Holy Trinity from Canon, three lens setup with the 70 to 200 2.8 as the main telephoto, 24 to 70 uh, 2.8 as well, and the 16 to 35 2.8, absolutely fantastic landscape lens. For still photography, I shoot with three filters, sorry, two filters, but they are Lee filters. So the two main filters I have are a six stop ND filter and a 0.6 stop soft grad ND filter. I also then have the foundation kit uh, for the three lenses here and the Canon. Um, for video, I shoot with the Panasonic GH5. This is a fantastic video camera. It is probably 100% of all the videos that I've filmed in the last two years, except for this one, but that's the magic camera up there. Um, and with this GH5, I shoot two lenses. This is the Leica 12 to 60, which is a fantastic lens for all around sort of cinematography and uh, run and gun filmmaking. So this, because the GH5 is a micro four thirds crop, this is essentially like a 24 to 120, really, really good all around lens, super sharp and just, yeah, fantastic. Then my other go-to lens is a really wide angle Panasonic. This is the seven to 14 lens F4, uh, but when it's on the uh, crop sensor, Again, the Micro Four Thirds, it's effectively like a, I don't know, 14 to 28, if you could say, but that's the main vlogging lens that I use uh, when I'm making a lot of these videos. Drone here is the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. It's got a great story behind it. I know a lot of you watching this know the story. If you don't, go and check out that drama. I'll link it up here. Got a pair of Bluetooth wireless headphones, super necessary for video editing. The laptop here is a Dell XPS 15, 4K touchscreen, 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's got a i7 processor and a NVIDIA graphics card, if that makes sense, but just a workhorse. That's my main office. That's where all of the video editing and the photo editing gets done. All of my business administration stuff, all of my communication happens on that computer. That's where I made the entire uh, online course over the last two weeks, all on that computer. Then this is a SSD from Samsung, uh, external uh, hard drive. This is one terabyte, 
super fast. It processes data, I believe, at 500 megabytes a second. So really, really good for editing 4K footage and uh, just exporting and rendering footage as well, way faster. Uh, over here is the gimbal. This is the Zune Tech uh, Crane Plus. Uh, I use this with the GH5, really, really handy. Super buttery smooth footage with that one. Then got the phone here. This is just my um, uh, Huawei Mate 20 Pro, which is really good cell phone for all that kind of social media stuff and uh, staying organized. This guy, this is the Yerba Mate Gourd. So in Argentina, Patagonia, Chile, and even Uruguay, these are very, very popular to drink uh, Yerba Mate tea. So this is from Patagonia last year, and I'm bringing it back down with me because it is, that's where it belongs, man. That is Patagonian. And this is the Thermos, my trusty Thermos. These things are absolutely fantastic. I believe this is a German brand. I bought this in Berlin, uh, and this is like, keeps uh, uh, water hot for 12 hours. Uh, also keeps water cold, but I don't really use it for cold things. It's almost always coffee uh, or hot water or tea um, for the mate. This side, I'm gonna keep moving because I wanna keep this relatively quick. This is the Magic Box. It's a Pelican case. It actually is the case that the Crane Gimbal came in. This is where I keep all of my miscellaneous stuff, uh, all the charging cables, extra batteries, extra hard drives, um, everything that I need. I mean, the controller for the drone, a headlamp, uh, my microphone, um, any kind of like miscellaneous things like a cleaning sensor material or extra props for the drone. But all that stuff, I really dive into detail in another video, which is called What's in My Magic Box. Boom. So go and check that out if you haven't seen that video already. So that's all the hard good stuff. Let's jump into the soft goods. So for Patagonia, it's really important that you have like uh, layers, 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 layers. The same as Iceland or Nepal, any kind of like mountain uh, environment where it can be cold or windy or raining and really unpredictable for weather. It's all about the layers. So uh, we'll be outside a lot doing sunrise photography and sunset shoots and just out in the conditions hiking a lot. So I've got um, it all sort of broken into categories. Uh, let's start with the casual stuff. So for casual, I've got four t-shirts here. Uh, those are just normal cotton t-shirts that I'll be wearing during like driving days or breakfast, whatever. I've got one nice shirt. This is my uh, tiger button up shirt, which I'm sure you've seen in previous videos. Uh, that's in case we go out for a nice dinner or something. It's the only nice shirt I really own, to be honest. Uh, I've got two pairs of hats. Uh, this is the one hat that I'll be taking down. And then, of course, the BBS squad hat. You know who you are. Shout out to the BBS squad. Taking that one down. Got a pair of sunglasses and glasses here. Uh, those jackets should be up there. Pair of jeans, of course, and a belt. A couple pairs of boxers. A couple pairs of casual socks back there. That's sort of my, my casual stuff. Uh, and then we're going to jump in. Oh, I've got one pair of casual shorts under here. Now the hiking stuff. This is the important thing because I'll be probably wearing most of this stuff most often. So for hiking, I've got two base layers um, for the bottoms. These are shorts. Uh, they're kind of like bathing suit material. This is what I wear instead of boxers. So these go under the hiking pant and they're really good uh, base layer for hiking or being outdoors for a long time. Then got a pair of hiking pants here. Uh, these are sort of quick dry stretchable fabric. I think it's some sort of polyester. I'm not sure. Um, I got these at an outdoor mountain store a couple of years ago in Spain and they've just been working fantastic for me in tons of different weather conditions. Stay nice and warm, dry, light, really, really good hiking pants. Uh, and then the outer layer for the pants is in this dry sack. It's actually a uh, shell pant, 100% waterproof, windproof. Um, I use them for skiing a lot and also for uh, hiking in the case that the weather really turns uh, to shit. I can throw these on top of the hiking pant and then I stay dry and I stay warm. So really good wind and waterproof layer uh, for the pant. Now let's jump into the top layers. So this shirt that I'm wearing is a um, marmot, marmot? Uh, shirt. It's just like a polyester hiking shirt, super breathable, quick dry, really good as a base layer. 
I've then got two additional base layers here. Uh, this one is made by Drifa, uh, which you'll see more of with the jackets. Actually, Drifa makes the outer shell pant as well. Uh, and this one is from Crag Hoppers, which I recently got. Very, very happy with both of these. These are long sleeve base layers. So this one's sort of a polyester, kind of stretchy layer. Um, also very breathable. You can wear it for days. It doesn't stink and keeps you warm, which is really nice from Drifa. And then this one from Craig Hoppers is actually the one I got at the Keyframe conference about two weeks ago or three weeks ago now. And uh, this is much warmer. It's still uh, really breathable and light. Um, and I don't think it stinks very much, but it's much softer. So I think it's kind of like more of a cotton, um, which is nice because that's what I'm going to wear if it gets really cold. That'll be the main base layer if it starts to get really cold. Then on top of those base layers, I've got a, a wool sweater. So wool sweater is always really good to have when you're out in uh, outdoor environments that could be cold. So this is uh, really good breathability and like sort of a, a secondary base layer. Um, so what goes over that is this brand new jacket from Drifa, which again is an outdoor gear company, which I can link in the description. They're one of my, uh, one of my sponsors, funny enough. I don't have any sponsors except for Drifa, so they're actually my only sponsor. But uh, very happy to share this gear with you because these guys are making some quality, quality stuff. So this is a brand new uh, synthetic down jacket. It's gonna be my main jacket, absolutely. The Architerics one from Albert Sport, that gray one that you've probably seen me wear in like 50 videos, has been replaced. Now I've got this Drifa, and this is gonna be every single day. This will be my main daily jacket. So really excited to have that synthetic down jacket to go over either the wool sweater or one of those base layer shirts. And then in the case that it gets really hectic, which is definitely possible in Patagonia, I've got the Drifa shell. So this I've had for a couple of years. You've probably seen this from Iceland or from the last year's Patagonia videos. This is a, a really good waterproof, windproof shell jacket layer. So worst case scenario that it gets really hectic out there. I've got the Drifa shell pant that I can put over my hiking pants and my hiking shorts. And then I've got this Drifa shell jacket that I can put over the down jacket and the sweater and the base layer. So definitely going to stay dry and warm with all this stuff. Uh, then finally, to sort of wrap it up, I've got socks over here for hiking, a couple different uh, toques here. These are like quick dry beanies. Uh, and then I've got a pair of hiking boots. These are super worn in, 100% uh, waterproof. I've had them for about two seasons, two and a half years now. So uh, they're definitely on their last legs, but I think I'll be able to get one more good month in, pa of, in Patagonia out of these guys. And then I've got a pair of sandals, which is just for around the hotel and when I wanna get out of the boots. And all this stuff, all everything you see here gets packed into these two bags, this Manfrotto Manhattan bag, and this just super generic uh, carry-on hard goods case. So that's it. How'd I do time-wise? I hope I've kept your attention. Uh, really a lot of stuff, and that's why it takes a bit long to get through these packing videos, but everything is super useful, and you always forget something. This is a pair of uh, waterproof, windproof gloves. I had these last year in Patagonia. Really, really good. They're not specific photography gloves. They're more of like, uh, I don't know, out outdoor sport gloves, but I find them really good because of the windproof and the waterproofness. Uh, of course, I'm forgetting stuff. Extra backpack, this is like a, a really small, quick uh, pack backpack, if that makes sense. This is actually just like a day pack that I use for random miscellaneous things once we're actually in location. Really good to have an extra bag so I don't have to Tetris all these things up every single time we're moving. Uh, so yeah, that's now the end of this video. So thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have any questions about any of this gear, throw it in the comments below. Check out the online course if you haven't already. I'm gonna keep plugging it over the next few videos. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one down in Patagonia.